Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. I'm here to you, Madam Sarani. So today, uh, my name is Nurul Jamil Kim Muhammad Rizki, and uh, together with my groupmates Alma and Maria, so we are going to present you about our text truth analysis project, which was based on Chicken Soup for the Soul, Think Positive book. Okay, so next. Okay, so the title, uh, as mentioned earlier, it is Chicken Soup for the Soul Think Positive, or whenever it was translated into Malay, Become Berfikir Positive. And then the author of the books are Jack, the author of the original version of the book was R. Jack Canfield, Mark Victor Hansen, and also Annie Newmark. But uh, the translator in Malay version are Adli Shamsuddin, Noriyanti Abdul Hassan, and also Rohani Sa'ad. So this is the reason why we choose the book. The first reason is because it is best seller and widely known motivational book. And then the second reason, it was translated into many languages around the world. So because uh, it was translated into many languages, so it is considered as uh, reliable sources. Okay, and then the next one is, it is good for self-reflection because the author know how to put things into perspective. They write a lot about life, but it is not just ordinary rambling uh, stories of life, but about life in general and also in the interesting point of view. And yeah, we just only choose one chapter from the book uh, to be uh, to be referred uh, as our sources for our textual analysis project. Okay, the chapter of the book entitled "Just Show Up." Uh, that's it. Okay, we continue with the textual analysis process. Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. My name is Maria, and now I'm, I am going to present about the textual analysis of our project. So, from what we discovered is that the translator used both of the translation techniques, which are the direct translation procedure technique and the oblique translation procedure technique. So, for the direct translation procedure, the translators use the technique of borrowing and literal translation. As for the oblique translation procedure, the translators use the technique of equivalence, modulation, transposition, as well as adaptation. However, what we discovered is that the translators use these three most, uh, these three techniques most significantly are modulation, equivalence, as well as adaptation. Next. So for the first technique that was significantly used, is modulation. According to Pico, modulation is a change in point of view that allows us to express the same phenomenon in a different way. So one of the examples of the translated text that uses this technique is the phrase, when the thought enters my brain, which was translated into apabila saja saya terfikir. So according to us, what we found out is that this translation is more appropriate because if you try to use a literal translation technique, it would cause an, an unpleasant, awkward feeling towards the readers because if you translate, if you literally translate it into Malay, it will sound something along the line of apabila fikiran itu memasuki uh, minda saya, which would sound kind of awkward because you would put the visuals of a thought literally creeping into a mind of someone. Okay, next. So the second prominent uh, translation technique that was used is equivalence. So according to Fawcett, uh, through Binet and Darbelne, uh, equivalence is the translation of idioms when two languages refer to the same situation in totally different ways. So one of the examples that use this technique is the sentence, I held my head in my hands, which was translated in the target text uh, as saya mula panik. So the sentence, I held my head in my hands, uh, has the same meaning of I began to panic. Hence, it was translated to saya mula panik because the saying uh, is uncommon in Malay language. So if you literally translate it, it would fail to convey the implicit meaning of the saying. And the final prominent translation technique that was used is the adaptation technique, which according to Gabriela Bosco from Interpro Translation Solutions, it is a translation technique that, which is a shift that is caused in the cultural environment. And one of the examples is the phrase, to meet Kelvin at Dunkin' Donuts, which was uh, 
translate it in the target text as berjumpa Kelvin Kedai Kopi. So as you can see, the name Dunkin' Donuts was simply translated as Kedai Kopi. And this is this is this occurred probably due to the norm of Malaysians preferring to have discussions at coffee shops. And as we all know, Dunkin' Donuts is a donut shop that also serves coffee. So that's why it was translated to Kedai Kopi. But uh, we discovered that this adaptation is also considered risky because as we all know, Dunkin' Donuts, as in the name, suggests that it's, it's also a, a donut shop. So it, it's not necessarily just a coffee shop. So now I will pass it down to the next presenter. Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. Uh, my name is Ahmad and now we move on to the review of the uh, presentation. Now, uh, based on our uh, analysis on the the chapter of the uh, Chicken, Chicken Soup of the Soul book, uh, we noticed that we uh, noticed that uh, the translators do fully understand the contents from the source text, meaning that uh, they know the English language uh, in and out of uh, in and out of the English language. They they know it uh, every aspect of in terms of American uh, context and all of it. And uh, we also know, uh, based on the uh, translation, uh, based on the analysis, uh, the translators also have adequate knowledge of uh, Malaysian language. And uh, we, based on the uh, based on the book uh, on the chapter of the uh, Chicken Soup of the Soul uh, book. The English language use abstract descriptions, whereas uh, Malay language they use uh, general descriptions to uh, explain everything uh, that is written in the uh, uh, in the book, the chapter. Next, uh, there occurred a few uh, mishaps of translation in the uh, uh, in the chapter. A uh, few of them examples is. It caught in maybe I will, maybe I won't land. Uh, it, that's the original address. That's the original uh, in the original language, but in the Malay language, uh, it is translated as "terperangkap dalam mindset saya boleh ataupun tidak boleh." Uh, now the problem here is the word mindset. Right? The word mindset is literally an English language. Instead of using the word uh, mentality. This probably due to having um, not because uh, they didn't think of the time uh, they did not have the precise translation word uh, in their mind at the time, or uh, they thought that uh, maybe mindset is the more uh, precise word at that moment. Right. Uh, next, All right. Uh, in over overall uh, of the chapter, they, it shows that they have the all translators have. Uh, an understanding of the cultural aspect of the Malay language to account when uh, they wanted to translate the book. For example, uh, in, in uh, Maria's uh, explanation of Dunkin' Donuts, right? Uh, in uh, in America, Dunkin' Donuts is a place where they hang out to have chat and have coffee and all. And, but for Malaysia, it will be just a coffee shop. Could I copy, right? Uh, so it's easily uh, translated into to, uh, what, what could be understood. Right? Another example would be uh, another part of the chap in the chapter would be uh, about uh, the baseball season. Right? For America, uh, the baseball season would be the best way to uh, describe a certain maybe a certain thing, some plot line. Uh, but for uh, us Malaysians, it would be towards the uh, football culture. Uh, or soccer culture for Americans, right? uh, because uh, we are more adept to uh, those kinds of uh, sports. Right? Uh, so the whole meaning is not changed, only the cultural aspect, meaning that they only focus on uh, what Malaysians would uh, read and understood by the references that is being given, instead of uh, just being given of uh, literal translation. And uh, overall of the translation of the whole chapter does not uh, affect the conveyance of the message that is being given uh, to the readers. Right? Uh, for in conclusion, the translators uh, have 
uh, the significant knowledge of the, both English language and Malay language. And those are all in terms of the cultural and also the linguistic aspect. Now, this the word significant uh, means a lot because based on uh, our textual analysis, they don't have uh, too many, uh, like they don't have a lot of knowledge. They only have uh, a certain amount of knowledge uh, so that they could uh, help translate all the English language, uh, the, the English language to the Malay language. That is all from us. Thank